Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to dive into a harrowing incident that shook Methodist Hospital in Dallas, Texas and left a community in shock. And this video will explore the unsettling details surrounding Nestor Hernandez, the shooter who plunged a joyful occasion into chaos. Join us as we uncover the disturbing truth behind his actions. I'm your host, and this is how they do that. On that fateful day at Methodist Hospital in Dallas, Texas, terror unfolded as Nestor Hernandez in a fit of rage and drunkenness turned a place of healing into a scene of horror. We're breaking news just in about a deadly shooting at a Texas hospital. It happened this morning inside Methodist Dallas Medical Center. We start in Dallas a defined active shooter inside a Dallas hospital. New video shows hospital staff and visitors hiding as police closed in on the shooter. That's when it all kind of hit us that like, oh, this is like serious, like this is actually happening. According to reports, Nestor Hernandez, who was on parole for aggravated robbery, arrived at the hospital to visit his girlfriend, Selena Villatoro, and their newborn son. But what followed was a series of events that no one could have predicted. Nestor Hernandez's path to the Methodist Hospital shooting was paved with a troubled past. Let's dig into the details. According to reports, Hernandez had a history of violent behavior and was on parole for aggravated robbery. The fact that he was wearing an ankle monitor at the time of the incident raises serious concerns about the effectiveness of our monitoring systems. But more on his criminal history this morning. In 2011, Hernandez was arrested for aggravated robbery, but got a two-year plea deal. He was arrested again in 2015 after he robbed a woman, beat her up, and threatened to kill her. Legal experts say uh, he should have been sentenced to at least 25 years, but prosecutors agreed to an eight-year prison sentence. And what makes this even more frustrating is Hernandez didn't even serve the full eight years. He was released with an ankle monitor a year ago, which he was wearing at the time of the shooting here at Methodist Dallas on Saturday. So this morning, we still have a lot of questions as to why he was released repeatedly. The Texas Board of Pardons and Parole did not respond to our questions. As we look deeper into Hernandez's background, we uncovered a disturbing track record of parole violations. This raises important questions about the supervision and support given to individuals released on parole, but we'll get to that later. On that day, on October 21st, 2022, a joyous occasion turned into a nightmare. Selena Viatoro, Hernandez's girlfriend and mother of his newborn baby became a victim of his violent outburst. Like whenever my water broke, he's the one that, that took me over there. We were texting good at first. Like when he woke up, he FaceTimed me. He was like, how's the baby? Is the baby okay? Like, how would you come in the hospital with the beer? Nah, you got me, you got me messed up. Who's been in here? Like, I'm not done. He's like, I told you to stop playing with me. He's like, nah, we're gonna die today. Press the button, press the button. I was like, no, you tripping. And I had the baby. I had my baby right here. And um, he hit me on this side. And I thought he was going to hit the baby. And then he just kept hitting me. <laughs> Nestor and Selena had a disturbing history marked by violence and control. Despite their time spent in prison together and subsequent release, Selena made the regrettable choice to return to Nestor unaware of the dangerous consequences that lay ahead. He got up and uh, he just went like around. And he just shot and I was like trying to make eyes with her like, like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what I was trying to do. And then he shot her and, uh, and then that's when all that just, he just kept saying like, yeah, you see, like you thought this was a game, like we're gonna die today, like, you enjoy your time with your baby, like, we're gonna die. He had the gun, you know, just pointing. I knew he was, like, gonna kill me, and then, like, kill himself. I didn't wanna... Yeah. I just didn't wanna leave my baby. I didn't wanna... I don't know, I just didn't wanna... I didn't wanna die. I didn't wanna die in front of my baby. I didn't... <laughs> As Selena Villatoro reaccounted the terrifying ordeal, we gained insight into the escalating tension that ultimately led to the hospital shooting. 
Nestor's criminal record marked by aggravated robbery and his parole violations painted a picture of a volatile individual. His excessive drinking and jealousy only added fuel to the fire, creating a toxic environment for Selena and their child. On scene was Methodist Sergeant Robert Rangel, who heard the shots and immediately jumped into action. Sergeant Robert Rangel just happened to be on the fourth floor at Methodist Labor and Delivery that Saturday when a never before experienced in Dallas deadly chain of events played out. And one police expert tells us Rangel's response, remarkable. As Hernandez reloaded his weapon, Rangel reportedly fired one shot at Hernandez, which struck him in the leg. Hernandez then retreated back inside his girlfriend's hospital room. Following a 10 minute standoff with law enforcement, Hernandez was taken into custody inside the room and was treated for his gunshot injury. The newborn in the room during the shootout was uninjured. In the midst of the chaos, hospital staff and law enforcement officers worked tirelessly to protect Selena and her baby. The bravery and quick response of Sergeant Robert Rangel and the shooting victims, hospital workers Jacqueline Pakua and Annette Flowers should never be forgotten. Nestor Hernandez now resides in the Dallas County Jail facing capital murder charges. However, the Methodist Hospital tragedy serves as a stark reminder that justice alone cannot undo the pain and loss experienced by victims and their family. The story forces us to confront the flaws within our criminal justice system. It demands a broader conversation about the necessary changes needed to prevent such senseless acts of violence. We must prioritize victim safety and rehabilitation. Let us not forget that there are many Selena Viatoros out there living in fear and facing the consequences of our broken system. It is our collective responsibility to demand comprehensive reforms that protect the innocent and ensure the rehabilitation of those who can be saved. In response to the Methodist hospital tragedy, state representative Rafael Achia plans to introduce a bill aimed at stricter parole conditions and consequences for those tampering with ankle monitors. The incident should serve as a wake up call for all of our society. It should demand that we reflect on the flaws in our criminal justice system and work towards reforms. It is our duty to ensure the safety and well-being of our communities. If the general public cannot feel safe and protected at a place like a hospital, it is a horrible reflection of our society. As we conclude this journey, our hearts go out to those affected by the Methodist hospital shooting. This tragic event emphasizes the need for change and reform. By shedding light on this case, we hope to contribute to a broader conversation that brings about the necessary changes hopefully to prevent future tragedies. Let us remember the importance of prioritizing the safety and well-being of ourselves and our loved ones. If you found this story intriguing or thought-provoking, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, make sure to turn on the notification bell so you can never miss an update. We'll be back with more news and stories that captivate our attention. Until then, take care, stay curious, and stay safe.